Hey there everyone, I hope you're doing well and staying safe out there. My name is Sila, and in this video today I bring you my comprehensive beginner's guide to the Scholar class, one of the vanilla healers in Final Fantasy XIV. In this guide, I'll be going over the basics of the Scholar, the abilities in their toolkits and how they're used, their party support abilities, and rounding off with some specific playstyle and dungeon tips and tricks. To unlock the Scholar class, you will need to level the Arcanist job to level 30, and then speak to Maria in Limsa Laminsa. So what does the Scholar do? Scholars are considered barrier healers, meaning they look to mitigate damage with their powerful shielding abilities, healing with powerful off-global cooldown abilities, utilizing the fairy pet to assist with healing, and support the party with the powerful crit buff and chain stratagem. More on this later on in the guide. Let's talk about the healing abilities first. If you already know the Scholar abilities, then please see the timestamps below in the description to jump to the playstyle and dungeons, tips and tricks. Our first healer skill is taken from the Arcanist class called Physic. Physic is a quick, cheap healing spell with no shields. Although you will not utilize this 100% of the time, don't neglect it. It will save your party when you have no other options available. Level 30 will be our flagship healing shield, Adeloquium, or Adlo for short. An expensive shield providing 125% healing done as a shield buff called Galvanize. If Adlo was to crit, a second shield for 125% will be applied as Catalyze. 35 will give us Sucker, our first AoE heal with a shielding effect similar to Adlo. However, crits will not apply a double shield. Having group shields up is amazing, spamming Sucker should be avoided as it costs 1100 MP. At level 45, we gain Aetherflow, one of our major resources, restoring 1000 MP and giving us 3 stacks of its namesake. These Aetherflow stacks will be spent on numerous abilities. We also gain Lustre at this level, a quick 1 second recast heal with 600 potency. This can be used as long as you have at least 1 stack of Aetherflow. Level 50 will give us Sacred Soil, one of our greatest AoE mitigation tools. Sacred Soil places a zone on the ground which will reduce damage by 10%. At level 78, the skill is enhanced with a regen effect as well. Level 52 grants us access to Indomitability, or Indom for short, our strongest AoE heal costing 1 Aether Flow. Level 56 will give us Deployment Tactics, which will allow us to transfer our Galvanized Shield to another target within 10 yards of the target that we have casted it on. 58 will give us access to Emergency Tactics, which will convert the next Galvanize or Catalyze Shield effect into a heal for the same value. Only Adlo and Sucker will be affected by this. At 62 we gain Excogitation, a powerful buff which when placed on a target will heal them for a whopping 800 potency if they drop below 50% HP, or if the buff expires. Keep this on cooldown. At 74 we gain Recitation, which will allow us to use either Adlo or Sucker with no MP cost and guarantee your crits, Indom with no Aetherflow cost, again guaranteeing a crit, or a free Xcog. Now let's talk about our Fairy Companion. As a quick note, Scholars have two fairies called Aeos and Selene. They do the exact same thing, the only difference is aesthetics. The one you see on the screen right now is Aeos. The fairies will cast Embrace, a quick heal on any target below 80% HP. While its potency is low at 150, it does heal for a nice amount and can crit. At level 20 we can command our fairy to use Whispering Dawn, our only regen spell with a whopping 2520 potency over its 21 second duration. A little later at level 40, we can command our fairy to use Fey Illumination, our major healing buff which will increase healing done by 10% to all members affected and reduce their magic damage taken by 5%. This scales with the item level of the individual. At level 70, we can command our fairy to create an Aether Pact, tethering our pet to our target and healing them as long as we have at least 10 fairy gauge to sustain it. While we're on the subject, let's talk about the fairy gauge. When we use an Aether ability such as Lustrate, Indom, Xcog, we will gain 10 fairy gauge. At 76, we can command our fairy to use Fey Blessing, a nice AoE heal around the fairy themselves. This costs 10 Fey Gauge as well, but has a 1 minute cooldown. Finally for our fairy, at level 80 we can summon Seraph, an upgraded fairy so to speak with access to our most powerful ability, Consolation. This works similar to Fey Blessing, but shields on top of the healed as well. 
Seraph can also use Seraphic Veil, which works like our Adlo. Okay, we've blethered on about our healing and our pets. What can we do in terms of damage? Well, I'm not going to mention the below abilities as they're upgraded into better versions, so let's focus on them. Broil 3 is our main casted damaging spell. Biolysis is our big dot that we're looking to maintain 100% of the time. And Energy Drain, which we learned at 45 to spend our Aether stacks to generate HP and MP. We do have Ruin 2, which was learned earlier on. This is used so we can weave in OGCD abilities and heals. I'll talk about this in the tips and tricks. Our big party buff as mentioned at the start is called Change Stratagem, which will cause everyone to have a 10% increased crit hit rate on the boss for its duration. There was one ability I didn't put into either healing or the damage section, Dissipation, mostly because it's lackluster, but it's still worth mentioning. By reading the tooltip, we can see Dissipation is a big healing buff giving us 20% increased healing, and while you'd be fine to believe that, it does not affect our Aether skills. Only Physic, Adlo, and Sucker are affected. We do gain 3 stacks of Aether, which is nice, but sacrificing your Fairy for this does mean all the healing falls back onto you. Personally, I use Dissipation for two scenarios. The start of the fight after I spent my original 3 Aether stacks for more damage, or in the big oh sh moments where I need to spam Lustry. We do have a few roll actions that we use often. Lucid Dreaming will regenerate our MP over time. Swiftcast will allow us to instantly cast a heal or better yet a res if needed. Asuna for dispelling debuffs. Surecast to prevent knockback effects. And Rescue to save that one Dragoon or Samurai that really wants to die. Okay, all of the abilities have now been covered. Let's look into dungeons and playstyle. If you're looking for a general overview, here it is. We should be looking to keep a shield up on the tank as much as possible, however we don't need to keep refreshing it when it falls off, the MP cost just doesn't justify this. Instead, refresh it every now and again when MP allows and focus on using your fairy to heal while you do some damage. The odd lustre and indom, sacred soil, will always help. It is important to know that as heals we are just as responsible for doing damage. If you're not comfortable doing damage yet, don't worry, don't stress yourself. Focus on the basics first then work in your damaging spells. Keeping XCOG up when you have it is vital to save our MP pool. If you stuck around this long, well let's talk about the specifics for each level. At low level dungeons from 15 until 30, your fairy should be able to handle the majority of healing. But do throw in a few physics now and again to keep everyone alive and try and use your damage spells where you can. From 30 onwards when you have access to Adlo, cast on pre pulls to make sure the tank goes in with a fresh shield every time. Refresh it where needed but again and I can't stress this enough, do not panic if Adlo falls off. When you gain Aether Flow, be sure to keep it on cooldown as much as you can, but do not overwrite the stacks. If Aether Flow is coming off cooldown and you still have 1 or 2 stacks left, try using Energy Drain if no healing is required, or Lustrate to spend the stacks. Then refresh Aether Flow. If you need to drop in a Lustre or Energy Drain, make sure to use Ruin 2 and cast the abilities in the cooldown window. Remember, always be casting. When you have access to deployment tactics, a great tip is to put the Adlo coin on the tank and then spread it to your party with deployment tactics. Another amazing strategy is to put the Adlo coin on the tank and on yourself on AoE pools. Stand close to do some damage with the tank and when their shield is used up, use deployment tactics to spread it back onto the tank. If things get rough, emergency tactics should be used to keep the party up. It's best to use it for sucker for the AoE healing, but you can technically use it for Adeloquim as well. At 60, feel free to use Dissipation where needed or just to squeeze in some extra damage. I've already mentioned keeping XCOG on cooldown as much as you can. Aether Pack should be utilised for some free healing, allowing you to do a bit more damage. Recitation should be used on XCOG before pull or on Adlo for a bigger shield. This will depend on a fight to fight basis, you'll start to learn this over time, we'll not worry about it too much for now. Throw in the odd Fae Blessing for AoE pulls instead of using Indom or Sucker, and use Seraph when the big boss hits are coming or you just need some extra shields for AoE pulls. 
That just about covers everything you need to know in order to play your Scholar from the moment you get it to the moment you hit level 80. Obviously, I haven't covered things such as rotations, stats, gear changes, gear priorities, potions, all that stuff. Mainly because there's a lot of better channels out there that will provide that information. One I would recommend is FFXIV Momo. I learned most of my score stuff off of him, the rest of it I picked up on my own. I'd also recommend checking the Balance Discord for this information. I hope you guys enjoyed my first ever Final Fantasy guide. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or visit me streaming at twitch.tv slash silentumahara. I would really appreciate it if you guys did enjoy the video to leave a like and consider subscribing. It's completely free to do so and you can unsub later on if you change your mind. If you didn't like the video, please leave a dislike and tell me where I can improve. Stay safe out there guys and until next time, see ya. Yeah, I can't give up this feeling That I get when looking down from the sky Oh, now we